all aboard for Gloryland Central! Gloryland Central is a ministry outreach featuring pastor, author, and teacher, Dr. Eric Benson. Gloryland Central is brought to you by IHBI, the Institute for Historical and Biblical Integrity, and through the faithful support of listeners just like you. start our time together by turning in our scriptures to the book of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, and we're going to start at verse 7, Ephesians chapter 4, starting at verse 7, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ, wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they, they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love, May we grow, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitteth jointly together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Do you remember which movie won the Academy Award in 1976? It was Rocky. And at one point in this film, Rocky tells his girlfriend, Adrian, remember Adrian, Adrian, of his desire to be somebody. He says he wants to go the distance with Apollo Creed. No one had done it before, apparently, and if he was still standing at that final bell, then he'd know he wasn't just another bum from the neighborhood. In other words, Rocky wanted his life to count. The fact is, every one of us want our life to count. We don't want to simply exist. We want our lives to have meaning. Today we're going to look at ministry from a unique perspective. I'd like to to look at it by considering three questions. Now we're going to talk about these three questions and I'm going to come back to them again at the end. So here are the three questions I'd like you to consider. Do you see ministry as a privilege? Do you see your service for God as a calling? And do you want to do church work or the work of the church? These are the questions that we're going to talk about here together. Folks, if we want to make a difference in this world in the name of our great God, we need to be passionate about being on mission. True ministry is a team effort. Paul emphasizes that each and every one of us is a team member with a part to play. We've been given a measure of Christ's gift, as we see in verse 7, for a certain purpose. No one is excluded used from his or her part in ministry. Every single one of us has a contribution to make. You know, to be used of God, we need to be willing to take our place. 
take our place in His mission. Think about the passage of Scripture that we looked at just a moment ago, where in verses 11 and 12, we saw the information about the offices that were presented. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, all working together on goal, on target for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. True ministry also demands surrender. We need to be willing to relinquish our rights and, and surrender our lives to Christ. That means we need to begin to see ourselves as servants of God. We surrender control of our lives and allow the Lord to assume control. That's very often a difficult thing. We like to be in charge. You know, true ministry involves reaching the lost. I know it sounds rather simple, but it's so easy to get sidetracked into busyness and regular activity that we lose focus on that great evangelistic call. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. That's sort of the Bible's way of saying everybody knows and agrees with this concept. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Well, do our activities reflect that great purpose? You know, they say one of the best ways to know the priority of a church is to look at its checkbook. I have information about a survey conducted by George Barna indicating that fewer than one in four Christians even believe that it is their responsibility to witness to others. Most Christians think that's the job of the professionals. Well, that's what we pay the pastor for, isn't it? In fact, most Christians, according to survey, never, never share their faith. Folks, all of the activities that we are engaged in in ministry need to be focused towards one goal. And that goal is this. How will this activity, how will this ministry help us to go to make disciples, to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? How will this help us to teach them those things that we have been commanded to do? We're very clearly given direction in Matthew chapter 28. You know, there's a great difference between church work and the work of the church. Did you know that? There's a difference between church work and the work of the church. Church work has no eternal significance. We, we, it's the type of things that we do when we think that we're serving God. It's busy work. Folks, being on mission for God is not doing church work. Why is it that we in the church today are so busy and yet we're not seeing great fruit? The church is probably more active than it's been in decades. And yet, society seems to slip further and further away from moral moorings. During the reign of Oliver Cromwell, the British government began to run low on silver coins, and Lord Cromwell sent out his men to scour the countryside and, and find as much silver as possible. They went to one local cathedral to see if maybe they had some of the precious metal on hand. After investigating, they came back and reported, well, the only silver we found was in some of the statues that they had there of the saints. And the radical Eng English soldier and statesman replied this, Good. We'll melt down the saints and put them into circulation. And that is what is needed today. We, the saints, need to have our hearts melted to have the love of Christ put into circulation through us so that we might reach this world with that great gospel message. We have neighbors who are lost. 
neighbors who aren't just eternally lost, but neighbors who, even in the temporal sense, have lost their way, have no great direction, have nothing to ground their families and their, and their, their moral ethics on. You know, I like what Wayne Dehoney said. He said, we're content to be keepers of the aquarium rather than to be fishers of men. As we examine the activities that we're engaged in as a congregation, as a body, we need to make sure that there is a greater percentage of work of the church going on than there is a percentage of church work going on. We need to make sure that the activity that we are engaged in is not busy work, is not spinning our wheels. If there are certain things that we are doing that are not working, we need to be willing to re-examine either how we're doing them or whether we should be doing them in the first place. Folks, to be used of God, we need to focus on the main thing. Take again a look at verse 15 in the passage we were looking at just a moment ago in Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 15, but speaking the truth in love may go up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. I'm reminded of a story about William Carey. He was a shoemaker by trade, but he had a longing to be a missionary. Everyone who came into his shop heard about Christ. One day, Fred took him aside and, and, and said, William, all this talk uh, about Jesus is, is going to ruin your business. And Carrie responded, my business? My business is to extend the kingdom of God. I only cobble shoes to meet expenses. The focus of Christianity is Christ. We focus on Him because Christianity is about our relationship with Him. We need to point people to a daily, divine encounter with our God. You know, in a sense, that's really what the essence of Celtic Christianity is all about. It's about the observance and interaction with the divine on a daily basis. Folks, if we plan to be, if we plan to be used of God, we need to understand the purpose of ministry. leads me to an interesting discussion about a particular scripture passage. In 1903, J. Armitage Robinson pointed out a mistake of adding a comma between the words saint and for in verse 12. Take a look again in verse 12. Now here's the interesting thing. By putting a comma in here, some of the translations seem to imply that God appointed church leaders for three separate reasons. Now these three reasons would be to equip the saints to do the work of ministry and to build up the body of Christ. Now reading it that way, it's only the so-called professionals who seem to be doing the work of ministry. Now folks, we know that is not the case. Each and every one of us fills a unique role in this ministry. We're all part of the great fulfilling of a, of a vision and mission for this church. That's what being an inside-out church is all about. It's about leaving these walls and taking that ministry to our communities, to our homes, to our schools, wherever we might be. And that's going to begin a chain reaction that can sweep all across this region if we're willing to do it. Finally, if you're going to be used by Yahweh, our great God, you need to be totally dependent upon His power, His direction, His word, His will for you. Take a look again in verse 16. from which the whole body fit it jointly together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. 
You might come up with a lot of reasons why God shouldn't use you. Well, you're in good company. Let me give you a couple. For instance, Moses stuttered, made excuses. John Mark, rejected by Paul. Timothy had ulcers. Hosea's wife was a prostitute. Jacob, a liar. David had an affair. Abraham was too old. Peter was afraid of death. Lazarus was dead. Jonah ran from God. Gideon and Thomas both doubted. Jeremiah depressed and suicidal. Elijah burned out. John the Baptist was a loudmouth. Martha was a worrywart. Moses had a short fuse, and so did Peter, and so did Paul, and so do I. I mean, a lot of people have. Well, maybe all of us do at some point. But folks, when you have the Holy Spirit within you, you have all you need. Everything that is in Christ, available to you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. His love, His wisdom, His patience, His power, His mercy become resources upon which you can draw. And as you focus on Him, He lives His life through you. That's why I always like to say that we are mirrors in motion, reflecting back the face of Christ to those that we would meet. So those three questions I began with, I'd like to go back to those now. I'd like you to think about these three questions this week. I'd like you to compare your life and your service for the Lord to these three questions. Compare our ministry. Compare the activities that we are engaged in. See how they line up with these three questions. Pray about these questions in your personal study time with your family and friends, in small group time. Do you see ministry as a privilege? Do you see your service for God as a calling? No matter what He has called you to do or be, small or great, do you see it as a calling? Do you want to do church work or do you want to do the work of the church? Folks, That's what we need to decide as we serve.